Hi, I'm Mariam Joy and welcome to my studio. Today I wanted to show you how to bead grapes on a gourd. And I am making ornament hangers or if you did them small enough, I think this would be really cute as a little brooch. So there's lots of different things you can do. We're going to start with just a regular gourd piece, whatever size you did decide to make it. This is a great time to use those cracked gourds or gourds that have other blemishes on them but have a great little piece. Go ahead and color it whatever color you think sets the beads off and we also want to varnish it before we start to do our beading. So once you get that done then we're going to go ahead and start. I did use a cutting board, a practice piece of gourd to try on first before you do it on your gourd. I really suggest that you do that. And sinew to string the beads with, I use an embroidery needle, um, a bead reamer, you could also use an awl, and green and purple beads these are size six and on the package they say six slash zero and you want them to match the colors of your wax that you're using on your gourd. I also use just some little tiny containers to put my beads in so they didn't run away. I used a cutting board when I was poking my holes with my bead reamer or an awl. I'm going to show you how to do the beading and I'm going to use a flat piece instead of a gourd. It's a bit easier for you to see. I normally use my white charcoal pencil but this is a piece that's been sealed so I'm going to use a grease pencil. I'm going to do smaller leaves on the top to make sure they don't overpower the grape. I'm going to just do two here and then you, however you think that grape should be and just kind of trail it off. Um, make sure your leaves aren't bigger than your grape and we may add more beads as we go along. There is no right or wrong. We're going to poke holes in all of this area. Um, this is kind of a simple method and then we're also going to go back later on and poke some more holes too because we kind of want a double layer. So um, we're going to be working as we go. I'm going to use a bead reamer. You can use an awl. You can also use your drill, your little uh, bit for your drill. You want these close together. Um, so that the beads are touching and are not far apart. And it's going to be whatever size of bead you're using. For mine, I'm going to be using this number six beads. The six slash zero is what they say if you look at the package. And so they're a bigger bead. I would not, would not do these with a um, seed bead. You just would have too many holes and I don't think it would hold up. And a drill may be a lot faster to do this with. The first time I kind of did it, I did one hole and bead at a time. So that's a, another thing you may want to um, consider too, is if you want to do one bead and put it on or not. Just however you think it should go. Just don't make it harder than it is and I'm doing mine on top of my um, cutting board thank you um, my wood cutting board just so I don't go into my craft table and poke holes in it and, and have that messed up later I am kind of just following my edges of this leaf right now but you don't even have to do that so um, however you kind of want to this whole gourd that we worked on today has just been kind of a free follow that however you think it should go kind of a free pattern um, freestyle as a word I am looking for here I think I don't know if this would be better than a drill or not. Sometimes with a drill, they can bounce around on you a little bit, and it can be kind of hard to control them. And you can have a little bit more control with the D reamer or the awl. And then I'm going to come back in now and just start 
punching holes to kind of fill in the area. You don't want them so close that you start to crack in between. That's real important. Okay, so I'm going to continue working and I'm going to do this whole area that way and then we'll show you how to put them together. I would look for beads that match your wax the best you can and get them more that color. For this to show up I'm going to use a little bit brighter color here and I like to put them in containers so they don't run away from me or put them on your felt pieces. These are little KFC um, would you get your side dishes in and then they have really nice little lids that stay good in there. I really like them for beading. Um, I'm going to use a yeah, an um, embroidery needle because it fits through my holes so you want to really think about you want something that's going to fit through those holes and you want to make sure that you've done those holes big enough. Keep your um, bead reamer handy just in case like that guy I didn't get him all the way through so he, my needle won't fit through him so that's real important that that fits through your needle. Tapestry needles would be nice but they're because they're not sharp on the top but our holes are smaller than that so we're gonna go with an embroidery needle and they're not too bad. Um, I am going to be using Sanu and I was taught to do beading with Sanu. One of the reason is is because it's waxy so it stays in place better, it doesn't slip and slide around on you. If you've got a bigger piece that needs to be pulled, you can pull it and make it smaller. So it all kind of depends on what you're using and what you like. So I'm just going to thread that through my needle. I've got to make a big enough um, knot that it doesn't go through or tie a bead onto it to keep it from coming through. So whatever you kind of feel works for you, then you can do that to get that knot big enough in the back. I'm going to start on the top with my leaves and I'm going to go through this first one here and up with the point and I'm going to just simply put that in there and go back down that same hole so every one of those is going to kind of be in their own hole if they're closer together you don't have room for it that's fine if you can a stack a layer especially when we get to the grapes that's fine as well and just do it however you need to now like on this guy we may even want to come back into that hole right there so we've actually used two holes now we wouldn't want to come back up him again or would lose that one so we're going to come over here to this other one if I can find him here there we go and this is really, like I stated before, it's really, really simple. Another great thing to do with these would be to make these, uh, if you did these small enough, you could make these into pendants, wearable pendants, or ornaments. It would be really fun as Christmas ornaments as well. And if you want to lay the bead a certain way, so it's laying down, it's standing up, those are all kind of things to think about. So it's totally up to you but we're basically doing unless like that guy I could have gone in that other hole it just depends on what you think you want to do with that and you can see it's starting just to fill in nice I'm gonna come up here because I got a space between there instead of poking another hole I'm gonna come back up under this guy here again and go to the other guy there but we're just filling in I know I keep saying that it's really that simple and you saw me just move that bead down from the top if it wasn't quite where I wanted it so I'm going to do one here 
to there. You wouldn't want to come up the one that you just did or your bead would fall off. I'm going to do one there to there. And one there to there. And how long you're working with your thread, if whatever is comfortable for you. If you're comfortable with a long piece, then cut a longer piece. I'll show you what happens when you come up that same hole there. See, it just pops right back up. So you're back to where you were, so that's a reason. But like this guy right here, we just come in him. I can find him here. And we're just going to him in there and I know I want to fill him more up this way so you can go this way or that other one either one of those is good and so you can see on this one we really don't have a layer we don't have that second layer which I didn't really want for the leaves I think that's more of the grape thing so I'm gonna come back in and do that more with the grapes so I'm going to continue on working on my leaves here. I'm going to go down to right about here. And then I'm going to start my other leaf here. The one thing I did, forgot to mention, is once I got my lines punched, I came in with my Mr. Clean Magic Eraser, and you don't have to buy the brand, and I cleaned off all my lines so that I didn't have any of those showing, and um, got that done before I started beading. So that was kind of important, I feel. And so I'm going to go ahead and get these worked on. If I feel there's any part I need to talk to you about, I will come and talk to you about that. Now, I do see one thing starting to happen here. I'm starting to get a line there, which I do not want between the, the two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and put a bead in the between those to kind of throw those lines off. So that we don't have those straight lines. There we go. See that took care of that right away. And then we'll take it on a grape. I'm starting to run out of thread here. So I'm going to stop and tie this to my end. And I did leave enough of a tail to tie onto, and then I'll probably even tie my next one onto this. Now, if you're doing it on the inside and you're going to competition, you may want that to look a little cleaner, but this isn't really a clean type of beading. This is kind of a down and dirty type of beading. Um, you may want to think about, um, if you were going to go to competition, covering it up with um, Mod Podge and on some paper over the top of that. I do that a lot with my beading. So now that I've got that double tied, I'm going to come in here and then I'm going to double tie my next one right on to it. And you always want to leave that tail a little bit longer so you can tie the next one. But we want that down and really tight. If you want to start out with a fresh one, you can. Just however you think that should go. And I'm going to re-thread it and start working again. Now this one, I thought I had it tighter, but I didn't have that quite tighter. So what I could do is I could stretch it out so it goes in one of those beads real tight. And then I can continue from there. So what I mean by that is that's really loose. So I'm going to go clear over to this guy and that will tighten him right up in the back and continue on working with my green now that I've finished my green leaves try to get the points on those and you could always come in like up here and poke another hole to get more of a point so don't feel that you can't change it but I didn't even tie off my um, thread I'm just simply going to change colors of my beads that's all if your tails start to get in the way uh, get rid of all but the last one that you want to tie on to and we're just gonna keep on going here 
I decided against the bright colorful ones that I have because they're not standard in size and I've got circle and square ones which is real original it's not looking real great with a um, grape we want round ones so I changed out colors here and I have simply just kept going we're hooked onto our green you don't need to tie it off just keep on going. Now, as you can see, all of our leaves are one layer. And we're going to start with our base of our grape. And to keep it easier for you, I think I'm going to do the base first. And then come back in and show you the layer above. I think that would just be a little bit easier. Just know if there's a real big gap between any of them that you can poke another hole in the middle. You don't have to worry about that. Or if you have a hole and it is too tight, you don't have to use that one. You can skip that one. Doing a practice piece is really, really good because it kind of teaches you how big you need the holes from each other instead of doing it straight on your gourd the first time out. But I think making a pendant or a Christmas ornament would be a great way to do these. And if you did this right, this would only take about half an hour or at least under an hour to do one. Unlike a lot of your beading when there's hour after hour after hour of beading. So this would go really fast. And of course you can make this a lot smaller. This is very large in comparison to the little one that I did here. This one isn't very big at all. So um, that's something to think about as well. So I'm going to go ahead and do this first layer. Another thing I'm going to tell you is along the edges, I had it too perfect. So I come back in and I poked some holes just to break up that perfect shape because grapes are not that even. They are just kind of in a here and there and however. So I'm going to go ahead and do that first layer and then we'll pick it up from there. So I'm getting down to these little ones at the end and I want to kind of show you. Like right here I see thread. So I'm going to run that up and put a bead right the same hole and that will cover that up. But these little guys, we want them kind of by themselves. We don't want them um, interacting a whole bunch. So we're going to kind of do them singly. And then we'll see if we need a bead in between each one of those kind of as well. But then, so we're kind of just going up the same hole and down the same hole to keep them... Um, um, kind of individual more so, but we're probably going to come back and add in between each one. It looks like to me they they should be touching. They shouldn't be kind of free floating. If you like them free floating, you can do it that way. That's okay. There's no right or wrong like we've talked about. It's just getting the beads in there. So I've done that and I'm going to come back now and I'm going to bridge them together. So I'm going to come up with this next one up and put a bead in between them. And if you have a space where it's really big too, if you didn't want to put another hole, you could put two beads in it. So you've got that option as well. So we've got that one. So we're going to come back in here and do this one between those two now. So it's branching and filling those in. So that's looking a lot better. So we're going to come up here. Catch this last one. Actually, I'm not even sure I'm going to do that. We'll see here. You don't want these solid. You want them kind of by themselves. So there, that looks really good. So I'm going to keep on working. I've been kind of just working, kind of going that direction. As you can see while I'm working here, I'm starting to get a straight line and we don't want that. So we're going to 
poke a couple more holes off to this side. And I'm going to do one, just one first. And then we'll see. You also can put your needle up backwards too. If you're having a hard time with it poking you or anything, I haven't had any hard time at all with it poking me. So, so then don't forget we want to run it this other direction to break up that line. But, and then we'll see if we need a couple more or if just the one hole outside of it was enough. My tail caught up here. Okay, being kind of ornery. There it goes. With wax linen, it doesn't usually get as tangled as with thread. That's another nice reason to use the wax linen over the the thread. I just like it because it holds it in place. So I'm going to go ahead and continue working. I might add one more between here and here, but other than that I'm not sure I'm going to put another one on the outside of that or not. So I'm going to do one between that one maybe. And I've got the thread showing there, so I'm going to just put a bead straight up and straight down, and that will cover that thread up on the outside. We finished the bottom layer of this, and we want to come back and put a few here and there. And it doesn't have to be a lot. As you can see on the little one, I think I have six total, but that's a lot smaller area. One of the things you want to look at putting on or like a bead that doesn't quite look as nice or if you have extra room and we're just going to pop up and hit some of those areas and we don't want to pull the bead all the way down. We want to leave it on top so we don't want to pull it real tight and you can go up and down the exact same hole, the bead will hold it in place and you're just going to have that extra layer there. So right here I've got a little bit of an area you can see so I want to do that. Now I don't want to go down that same hole it will stay right on top. I want to go over to the next little area right there if I can find it with my needle and it will stay up on top. So we're going to just do a few of these and you can just kind of poke your needle in the back if you don't know where all you should be hitting if you're pretty even. But we want it to have that look of grapes. We don't want it to be flat. This gives it more of that 3D effect. You don't want your string to show those. So we want to kind of keep that in mind. And if you need to do it again in that area, then do it again. Like that guy kind of went down underneath. So I'm going to pull him tight and I'm going to put another one back on top there. You don't want it too big of an area if you're going from thing to thing because you don't want the um, the thread to show. Otherwise, just go up the same hole and down the same hole, and that keeps that thread from showing too much. So we're starting to get this built up, and I am just going to keep doing it until I think I've got enough. 
Another thing, if you had similar beads and you had a lighter color, you could do it like we did the grapes, so next to lighter color. So I'm going to add a few more here and there, and then we'll finish up. All right, I went ahead and finished it. I pulled just like one down here, but I have a few because this is a little bit bigger grape, maybe a dozen, but it's not all over the place. So it just kind of gives it that real 3D effect. And I'm just going to flip it over here, and I'm going to tie it. If you want to, you also can put a dot of super glue or E6000 on the knot after you're done to help hold it into place. Um, that's another thing that you can do to help keep that a little bit tighter and not worried about the knot ever coming out. If this was on a regular gourd, um, see how the purple kind of blends in. I would probably put the gold around the edges or uh, brown if it was on here. Some brown shading behind it to really even make it pop out a little bit more. But that is really how to do the beaded part of the grape. And Don't make it hard. Just keep it simple and don't overthink it. I decided that I'm going to turn mine into an ornament since it is so big. I'm going to use a scrap piece of leather to do the back and then also leather lacing around the edges and I wanted to kind of make sure that the colors kind of match. I'm going to use a little bit of cording for the hanger. So I'm just going to simply set my piece on. I'm going to trace it with my white charcoal pencil. You could use whatever would show up on your leather. My leather's darker, so we can use that white one. Remember, if it won't write real well, heat it up with a lighter or a flame of some sort. I'm going to be using my snips, and these are a really nice heavy-duty scissor. So if you need something that's going to cut your foil and different things like that and material because I couldn't even begin to budge this with my craft scissors and also kind of know which is your top and your bottom and you may want to write that on there and I was cutting inside those lines because remember those lines are on the outside so we're going to make sure that none of this shows and I've still got too much showing here And so, I am going to trim this some more, and I'm just going to lay it down. Remember, if you're doing a piece that kind of curves, you've got to allow for that curvature as well. All right. So we want whatever size hanger you want to do. Usually don't want it too long, but usually don't want it too short that it can't stick on something. And I'm just going to do a regular knot, both ends here. Now if that really showed through on your um, leather you might not want to do it. We want to make sure all these pieces are tucked in or cut or whatever before we glue this all on. And I gotta remember which way I pulled it off. And the only time I'm going to use the hot glue is just for my um, hanger. And I probably am going to take that knot off because I think it's just going to show too much and just glue that on with the hot glue. And then we'll make sure that it's really well before we put the other part on it as well. You also can put a piece of paper or material over that and that helps keep that in place. I do that a lot when I'm hot gluing an item that normally you can't do because the paper or the material is more absorbent. We also want to make sure that it kind of hangs straight. 
Now if you were doing a pin, you would do the exact same thing, only you wouldn't add the hanger, you would just put the pin on. So it's basically pretty much the same. I'm going to be using tacky glue, and I also want to make sure that I have all the ends of my um, beading all covered up nice and well so that none of that comes out. Make sure I have my tacky glue all the way up to the edges. And just get that really well. I like to use my tacky glue in little small um, bottles because I can squeeze them easier than a big bottle. And I just use my big bottles a lot of times and refill them. And that works well for me. Okay, so got that all nice and gooshy here. It's one nice thing about having the paper on the table. And then I'm going to put my backing on. Make sure you've got that nice and even. See, our knot would have really, really shown up there if we'd have done that. You can still trim the edges if you need to. It's not a big deal. Get those all pushed down. And then we're going to start this um, edging around the outside. Now remember, this is our top. So I probably want the top um, not the, the lacing not to come together at the top. To keep that more nice and clean is what I'm trying to say. So we're going to start it at the bottom this time. And I'm still going to be using the tacky glue. Yeah, this part's getting the lids off. In the summertime, you watch your dry time on these while you're working them. If you need to do half, and then put it on, and then do the other half, you can do that as well. I'm going to spread it around with my finger. Make sure it's not on the up on the top. little bit of wider lacing because this gourd piece is a little bit wider so it's going to depend on your um, piece but you always can use um, go to the craft store and look at uh, the in the lace section or the ribbon section you can use stuff like that it doesn't have to be leather anything that you want along those lines okay Start this at the bottom. Make sure you have the right side out. Make sure you don't have glue on your hands so you don't goober up your lacing as you put it on. Probably is easier and not as messy to do one at a time. Now, if your gourd piece is wider than the lacing, scoot the lacing to the top. And that makes it look neater. You also could just paint it like with gold or some type of metallic paint or black as a background cover. I just think that uh, putting this on it just makes it a little bit neater. We want to cut that off almost exactly where we started so we don't have an overlap and we don't have a gap. It's better to cut it too long than not long enough. Push your lacing all the way around. Make sure you're keeping it near the top. It doesn't slide down on you. And once you're all done with that, you have your harvest gourd piece ornament hanger. So we've completed our grape ornament hangers and these are so much fun. These are great for friends, people that like to drink wine or just like to decorate with grapes. It'd be a cute little thing. You could even wrap it around a bottle and tie it on or put it around the neck it would be really cute as well so there's a bunch of things that you can do with that if you ever have any questions about whatever we've worked on please email me at art at miriamjoy.com please give us a thumbs up tell us that you like the videos so we can continue to bring you more of these thank you god bless